Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I've got a disturbing serial killer novel for you, Birdman by Mo Hader. So this is a book I'm reading for my Disturbing Books project, where I'm reading disturbing books that have been recommended or suggested by, by viewers. Um, this one was, was recommended by a number of people, and in fact the whole series was. So this is this is part of a series of books about the same detective, um, written by the author Bo Hader. Um, and in fact a lot of people said the second book in the series, The Treatment, is, is the more disturbing one, or the most disturbing one in the series. So I do have, as you might be able to see on the shelves, uh, behind me I've got some of the other books in the series I don't yet have a copy of the treatment so I definitely need to get that because Birdman was really really good um, and it's made me want to read more um, so the book came out in in 1999 and I'm kind of amazed I haven't read it it was um, it made quite a splash at the time I remember it coming out and being talked about um, and you know the late 90s was really the heyday of this kind of police procedural serial killer book there were just tons of them at the time so the fact that I remember people talking about Birdman shows that you know it had a decent reputation and I can understand why it's a, it's a really good book and I can see why it and and the series um, were successful um, but yeah I didn't read it at the time I can't figure out why but I'm glad that I now have because uh, I had a really good time with it so it's about a uh, this detective Jack Caffrey um, operating in London so you know a, p a police detective um, who's investigating um, a number of bodies of young women that have been found um, all of them mean have been horribly mutilated in similar ways um, and it you know it's apparent right from the start of the book that there's some kind of serial killer operating um, is very much a police procedural in that it's about the kind of you know the the process of police detection you don't get the, the kind of um the, the, the kind of leaps of intuition and things like that you get in Sherlock Holmes or uh, you know Poirot or something like that it's much more about the kind of footwork you know interviewing lots of different people you know gathering the stories together um, uh, gathering together forensic evidence and, and putting that together to, to form a case and identify the killer um, I really like that style of detective novel and, and this is a this is a very good one um, and that sense of, of time and place is, is really well done. So, you know, I, I didn't live in London in the in the late 90s, but I lived close by and I was certainly visiting London a lot of the time. Uh, and this really does feel like, um, you know, it's set, you know, it's, it's got a very British kind of feel to it. There's lots of slang, there's lots of uh, kind of cultural references and things like that. Um, and, you know, Hayden does a really good job of, of building up a sense of what London was like in the 90s. The other thing that you get, uh, which is really interesting in this, is a discussion of racism in the, in the Metropolitan Police. So the book came out not long after the Stephen Lawrence case. So Stephen Lawrence was a, was a young black teenager who was murdered. Um, and the police investigation into that murder was kind of mired by the institutional racism in, in the Metropolitan Police. And, and um, you know, it took them a lot longer to crack the case than it should have done as a result. And that led to uh, a kind of investigation into racism in the police force. Um, and you get a lot of discussion of, the, of that case and of that racism in this book. Now, you know, sadly, we are... 25 years nearly later um, and the Metropolitan Police is, is you know still talked about as being institutionally racist so not a great deal has changed sadly in the intervening period. Um, there's also a lot of uh, kind of misogyny in this book um, in, in the same way so you know some of the some of the policemen in this book are, are and one in particular, um, are pretty horrible characters. Um, but Jack Caffrey the, the hero definitely doesn't fall into, into that camp. Um, so is it disturbing? And, and I find this kind of book interesting in terms of the discussion of disturbing books because these books are so, you know, books like this are so prevalent and so popular in our culture um, and yet are, you know, describe horrifically disturbing things. Um, you know, some of the stuff that's talked about in this book and, and there isn't a great deal of kind of on the page violence, although there is some towards the end. It's more... 
um, you know, the kind of, you know, forensic and pathology and things like that, uncovering what has happened to the victims. But yeah, there is some really horrific stuff in here. And yet this is a very mainstream book. So, you know, in terms of the acts, if you like, that are described in this book, they are as, as horrific and disturbing as things in any of the disturbing books I've read um, for this disturbing books project that I'm doing. And yet this is a really mainstream book. And, and I do think there's something about that, that discussion of the, the, you know, the really dark side of, of human nature in books like this, um, which has a, a has a mass appeal. People, you know, want to understand that kind of thing. They want to read about that kind of thing, but they want to do it in a in a relatively safe way. And I think detective novels give us that safe way to read about it because we are we are seeing things through the eyes of the detective, and we know because it's a detective novel that there will be a, a resolution. You know, that's kind of built into the into the format, isn't it? The fact that the, the killer will be brought to justice. Um, so, yeah, definitely very, very disturbing. And there's also a whole disturbing backstory as well um, about events in, in Jack's childhood, which is, you know, which is kind of equally disturbing. Um, but Mo Hader does a really good job of, of weaving that together and making a book that is incredibly compelling to read it's it really is uh really is gripping so i i read this as a buddy read uh with alice from the channel alice and the giant bookshelf and we both were saying you know we can't put this down and because we were doing it as a buddy read we were kind of having to pause so we could discuss so we were discussing every 10 chapters or so um but I don't think either of us wanted to pause. We both just wanted to carry on because it's a really, really gripping and, and very well written in terms of just being very readable. Um, you know, you you just the, the pages just fly by um, and it's written in such a way that feels, um, you know, convincing and credible. But it's it's never a challenge to, to read it. The, the events you're reading on the page might be horrific, but the prose just kind of flows naturally into your brain, if that makes sense. So, yeah, a very, very readable and, and gripping book. And I think the thing that makes it more disturbing than it would have been otherwise, and certainly more disturbing than some of the other books I've read in, in a similar vein, is the fact that Mo Hader plays around with the reader quite a lot in this book. There's stuff she does in kind of the, the, the pacing and the gradual... Um, revelation about what's going on that tricks you as a reader a bit and, and at times lulls you into a, a kind of false sense of security and that you feel like you know what's going to happen. Um, so she does a thing where she, she actually introduces you to, to the killer fairly early on in the book. So as well as the investigation, you, get, you do get to see some chapters from, from the killer's point of view. And that technique and the way she weaves that into the whole story is very, very cleverly done. And you you, you feel as a result like you know what's going on, um, but actually you don't. And, and if, there's a few points in the book where she kind of pulls the rug from under you. Um, and that makes the events, you know, more disturbing than they would have been otherwise. I think she was a very, very clever writer. Sadly, she died um, a couple of years ago. Um, but I, I'm definitely keen to read more by her. I thought this was a, a really excellent detective novel. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you've read uh, Birdman or other Mo Hader books and if you're a fan of her work. Uh, let me know if you've got any other recommendations for, for books like this I may have missed over the years. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.